I like The Last Jedi. <laughs> yeah, in fact, it's my third favorite Star Wars movie. So today I'd like to point out how the newest and apparently final Star Wars film in the Skywalker Saga compares to The Last Jedi, and to a lesser extent The Force Awakens. Just before we start guys, if you could check out my Star Wars story, Night of Peace, a lot of effort went into it and if you could give it a watch it would be awesome. Also remember to subscribe and click that bell. On to the essay, review, both. So in December of 2015 when I saw The Last Jedi, I finished and walked out of the cinema going, wow, that was pretty great. There was some bumpy stuff, but overall I thought it was a really solid film, and I was interested to see where the sequel trilogy would end. And then I saw the reaction to the film. <laughs> Holy shit. But whatever. So two years later I was sitting in the cinema, giddy with excitement. The Rise of Skywalker was about to start and... Uh, I didn't want to make this video solely because I don't want to go watch The Rise of Skywalker again. But you kind of have to, don't you? So I thought I'd mix something I like with something I really don't. Now, originally I gave the film a 5.5 out of 10. In hindsight, I'd probably strike that down to a straight 5, but here's the thing. I don't hate the film at all. I've gotten some sort of enjoyment from all of these Disney Star Wars films. And this isn't going to be one of those pathetic Disney ruined Star Wars rants because... It already got ruined in a much worse way. Oh my god! So we'll go through some specific categories such as writing, the way they deal with characters, action, and other various filmmaking techniques, and how each film does it, and if they succeed or not. Cause the writing's on the now, The Last Jedi is nothing special in terms of writing in general. It can basically be deconstructed into three areas. The Luke, Rey, and Kylo stuff is great. The story between the three is slow yet interesting, discovering what has caused Luke and Ben to be like this along with Rey. The dialogue is thought-provoking and subtle, breaking down the legacy of the Jedi and Luke's own legacy. We'll get to that later. Rey discovering where she fits into this world while also trying to pull Ren back to the light. Kylo's internal struggle with Snoke and Rey, it's all fantastic and really intriguing character stuff. The second is the Poe and Holdo storyline, which is... It's fine. It's not as bad as everyone says it is. She emasculates him, big deal. The story has holes, but ultimately the point is to show that Poe learns a lesson about defying authority and how he can't solve problems by being cocky and arrogant. It gives him a full character arc. But Finn and Rose... Yeah... It's not great, is it? Rose is a likable enough character, and the story does give us the interesting message that both the First Order and the Resistance are more similar than it seems. You and I are not so different. But it doesn't contribute enough to the overall story to be necessary. However, you can't deny the way the story culminates on Crate and with the beautiful hyperspace jump is masterfully handled. And then now, that leads us to The Rise of Skywalker. The Rise of Skywalker is a convoluted mess. It's an Indiana Jones movie in space, even down to how the villains die. It's filmmakers going, oh shit, what do we do? And instead of getting creative, they got lazy and went down the most obvious plot they could. No dialogue in this film is actual character development. It's all exposition. 90% of the dialogue in this film is, we have to do the thing to get the thing to beat Kylo. The closest thing we get to real character development is this. And it's you the worst line in the film. You're his granddaughter. You are a Palpatine. The storylines don't collide in a satisfying way. They sort of split after halfway and never come back together in the proper way. It's the same problem that Return of the Jedi had. At least Revenge of the Sith all culminated for the final, and it was all based on that fight between Obi-Wan and Anakin. As stupid and as over the top as that was, it was probably the best example of this, all culminating in one location. The Rise of Skywalker spends way too much time either retconning The Last Jedi or introducing new characters, rather than continuing the already established story. New characters like love interests for Poe and Finn, aliens, resistance leaders, the new First Order personnel, the Knights of Ren, it all feels rushed and we don't get a sense of who any of these people actually are. In The Last Jedi, the three stories are given significant time to breathe. In The Rise of Skywalker, all 15 stories are rushed. The only story given any weight is Rey and Kylo. 
In The Last Jedi, we had the storylines of Rey, Luke, and Kylo's connection, Finn and Rose, Poe, and Holdo. We've already been through that. All three are given time whether you like them or not, and we understand the goal here, which all culminate for the third act. Meanwhile, in The Rise of Skywalker, we get Rey and Kylo, Palpatine's revenge, Poe and Zori, Finn and Rey, Rey's parents, Hux is the spy, Leia and Kylo, Lando's return, Finn and Janna, C-3PO's story, the whole Ochi subplot, and only one of these stories is actually given significant time. Everything feels rushed to distract you from how muddled the story actually is, throwing up big bombastic action scenes to distract the audience from the fact that this plot makes no sense. Now, I'm not going to harp on about storylines for too long, because with Star Wars, the story has always been a backdrop for the characters, connecting to them and their plights. So that's what I'd like to spend a main bulk of this review talking about, how the film treats its characters. Just before that, though, I'll talk about the technical aspects, because despite what all these reviews might tell you, there's more to films than storytelling. The Last Jedi is a visually beautiful film. Ryan Johnson is the best filmmaker to direct Star Wars. The CGI is stunning, the space battles, the designs of the planets, especially Crate. Yes, yeah, space horses is there, but that's one bit. Everything else looks fantastic. The way the lightsaber fights are shot with the wide lenses. In IMAX, it was stunning to witness. The attention to practical details throughout the entire sequel trilogy is one of the best elements of it. There are so many shots I remember from it. Kylo and Luke, Luke and Yoda looking at the burning tree, the speeders on crate, the light speed attack, broom boy. Meanwhile, in Rise, we get the final shot. There's no color to the frame. It's all just bland blues and blacks. Meanwhile, in The Last Jedi, we get reds and whites popping out on the screen that look beautiful. The festival on Pisana has some cool Mad Max looking scenery with the dust paint bombs, but apart from that, Exegol is dark and dull. The Rebel Planet is just another Endor. I like Kajimi with the moody lighting and it reminds me of a spy thriller. The Endor planet is cool, but it's cloudy making the scene look really dull. Maybe have a raging storm overhead. This is a big one. The Last Jedi actually has themes and something to say in a Star Wars film for the first time since Empire Strikes Back. It has themes of learning through failure from the Luke, Poe and Finn storylines, Luke pointing out the failures of the Jedi, the themes of bloodlines and your place in a larger world with Rey and Kylo, how they come from different worlds, Rey from nothing and Kylo from the most important bloodline in the galaxy. The theme of good and bad being based on contrasting ideologies with DJ explaining how the rich profit from both the First Order and the Resistance. The theme of letting the past die with Kylo wanting to destroy the old and Rey wanting to salvage it. Meanwhile in the rise of Skywalker, the only theme is accepting who you are with Rey being the Palpatine, which undoes the bloodline theme of The Last Jedi, and then undoes itself with the final line of the film. Rey Skywalker. What? This film has nothing larger to say than Jedi good, Sith bad. No one outside of Rey and Kylo have anything in the way of internal conflict. Somehow the character with the most internal struggles outside of those two was Leia, and Carrie Fisher wasn't even there. Without these greater themes, the film might as well just be another generic sci-fi action movie. Now to the characters. <laughs> Rey in The Last Jedi to me is her at her best. She's the pure-hearted hero and shows great resilience despite everything that gets thrown at her. The hero she finds is a shell of his former self. She's dealing with the death of Han and the stress of being an icon to the Resistance. She is trying to turn Kylo back and she is a big part of what causes his change of heart. She finds out that she has come from nothing which nearly breaks her spirit, but ultimately she pulls through for the final battle and must deal with being the Resistance's final hope. She was put through the ringer in the film and I love how her character was a normal person. Experiencing this universe for the first time, that helped make her character and her struggles relatable. We can relate to someone coming from nothing to try and find their way in a bigger world, not to someone who is touted as a space Jesus or some mythological god. In Rise of Skywalker, she has no struggles. This is where the whole Mary Sue thing, which is fucking annoying to hear ever since that scumbag brought it up, people have just been latching onto that damn statement, and to me there are much worse examples of this, but because it's Star Wars fans, this gets blown way out of proportion. But unfortunately, The Rise of Skywalker lends to those criticisms. In this movie, she heals people's wounds, does mega backflips, pilots water skiffs, beats Kylo, and I love Daisy Ridley, but... <sighs> it's definitely her weakest outing. Her being Palpatine's granddaughter, though. That's the dumbest shit. It completely undoes the most interesting thing about her character. Having her be Palpatine's granddaughter feels like a stupid fan fiction by someone on Reddit. And I've seen people say that it makes sense because she jabbed the guy like he did. 
Fuck off! It destroys to me what was so fascinating about Rey's character, and also it doesn't add anything to her in the long run. In the last two films, they never hinted Palpatine in any way, so it makes no difference to her character. It's extremely obvious that this was just a hastily put together thing in order to respond to the complaints that she had to be related to someone, in order to justify her having any sort of powers, but instead of doing something creative and interesting, it's just a Palpatine did it, which is a massive problem with the Star Wars franchise. Just using the character as a scapegoat for bad writing, like how when he was confronted by the Jedi in Revenge of the Sith, he mind controlled them, or he used the force to mind control Padme and make her die or something. It's when people's biggest arguments for things is Palpatine did it, that's when you know the argument has no weight to it, because it's just lazy screenwriting. The franchise just uses the character as a scapegoat for bad writing. She has no emotional connection with him which was set up at all. With Luke, he knew Vader and that he was the apparent murderer of his father, and the murderer of his mentor. So when the reveal came, it was unexpected, yes, but completely in the realm of possibility. Meanwhile here, it's like the clone of Palps had a kid and then was killed. Like. What the fuck? That's impossible! You're not just wrong, you're stupid. Now wait just a minute. And you're ugly, just like your mum. Did you just call my mother ugly? Shut up! I mean it! I will end you! In The Last Jedi, Kylo Ren was a phenomenal character. It felt like the whole story was revolving around the actions of this unstable guy, which helped create tension in every scene he was in. People could actually die in this film, and it could happen quickly. I love that we see him in vulnerable places, and people calling him a whiny bitch just must not understand good character writing. As great as Vader was, he was never a relatable character until the end of Jedi. Meanwhile with Ren, we feel the same struggle he does. He wants to live up to his bloodline before him, but he feels the tug of his family and the light side with Rey eventually coming to a boiling point of killing Snoke, deciding to carve his own destiny not to be a servant like Vader. Instead of fulfilling the destiny Snoke had planned, he decides to create his own. And I love this. His inner conflict is what makes him one of the best characters in the entire franchise. In The Rise of Skywalker, most of this is still in place, but unfortunately the third act is where it goes to shit. After that fantastic scene with Han, he only gets a few words and grunts for the rest of the film. <laughs> He quickly turns into the comic relief before getting a kiss of gratitude and then dies, ensuring that all loose ends are tied up. If I was in charge of this, I wouldn't have turned Ren. Instead, I would have had him completely corrupted, dying at his own hand from his lust of power. Dying a defiant, maniacal villain, completely selling his turn, and then he would die. But instead, we get, oh well, I guess I got a lightsaber! Uh, Finn, I'm gonna call you Finn, is that alright? Finn, yeah, Finn, I like that! Both movies wasted Finn. He was an amazing character in The Force Awakens and had such a great arc. It was such an original and creative idea, but then in The Last Jedi he just goes on his weird side quest, beats Phasma and that gets his sacrifice cut off. At least it's better than The Rise of Skywalker where he says something to Rey which apparently was going to be that he was force sensitive. Then he rides some horses and then cries at the end. They should have had the military power come to him, show his transformation from a hesitant stormtrooper to a heroic leader of the resistance. Have fun scenes of him figuring out how to fly or fight. Just anything. In the last two films, Finn's character is basically just boiled down to, how are we going to stop this thing? And then Finn would just say, oh, I mopped it. I know where it is. What? Skadoosh. <laughs> One of the things people liked about The Force Awakens was Poe. He was cool, charismatic, and an ace pilot. Kind of a hotshot who was just a really likeable guy. Kind of like Han Solo. But in The Last Jedi, they paired him with a really interesting story arc. He learns the ramifications of his actions. It grounds the kind of cartoony character that is lit at action movies and paints him in a more real light. We learn more about Poe's character, and it makes him more than just a cliché. He's an ace pilot, yes, but he makes mistakes and thinks about the big picture only. That the ends don't always justify the means. In The Rise of Skywalker, they do give him some interesting backstory with Zori and how they used to be a couple or something. But it's literally given one scene, and then Poe makes a face at her and that's it. He's reduced to just being the pilot. Much how Finn is a plot device for knowing where the First Order stuff is, Poe is just a plot element to fly a ship from place to place and get that coin from Zori. He had great potential and really I think the problem is that he should have been in The Force Awakens at the start with Finn and Rey. Learning more about him, the three would have their fun banter without it feeling forced in this one. But instead he just pops up an hour and 20 minutes into the film and says that he got ejected from the TIE Fighter. This is kind of the big one. Luke's treatment in The Last Jedi is to me the big thing that has divided the fanbase. 
I think that hate for the film in other aspects is amplified from how people feel about Luke's treatment, and that to me is unfair. If you bring a character back, they need to serve a greater purpose in the film than just doing what they did before. You need to build on what came before. Find a new storyline and arc for the characters, and this trilogy, Han, Luke, and Leia all got that. Luke wasn't the fans' version. The fans are Rey, expecting our heroic character to return and wield Excalibur, doing what he did before. The fans wanted Luke to come back, train Rey and take Star Destroyers out of the sky, doing flips and throwing his lightsaber around, and honestly, that sounds terrible. We've already seen Luke as the Jedi, and we've seen the wise Jedi story already. Just doing the Yoda thing with Luke would be treading tired ground. Instead, we get a story with themes and messages. The film acts as a commentary on the struggles of dealing with legacy and the weight that it carries. Many figures throughout history have crumbled under the immense amount of stress that has come with the responsibilities of being an icon, and there may be no other movie protagonist as iconic as Luke Skywalker. The ultimate good guy. The wide-eyed kid who brought a generation with him on a journey, and now has become a disheveled old man who has turned his back on his friends, family, and religion. Luke's storyline in The Last Jedi is the most compelling in possibly the franchise, we see how far he has slumped, drinking sea cow milk, tossing his saber away and constantly ridiculing the Jedi. Hypocrisy, hubris. That's not true. At the height of their powers, they allowed Darth Sidious to rise, create the Empire and wipe them out. It was a Jedi master who was responsible for the training and creation of Darth Vader. We see how his mistakes have changed his perspective. To any person saying that Luke is acting out of character, it's been 34 years since we've seen him, which is a hell of a lot of time for one to change. For example, there's a lot of difference between a 17-year-old and a 51-year-old. Maybe he might not match your version of the character, but this is canon. Yours isn't. Luke going out on crate to face down the First Order is excellent. I like the foreshadowing of it throughout the film and the little touches Johnson gives in the final fight. Like Luke not leaving any footprints. I love his little monologue inspiring hope for the rebirth of the Rebellion and he goes out in the most Jedi way possible. He saves those fighting for good, defeats those fighting for domination and power, but in a way that does not cause physical harm to anyone. His character slowly comes around, needing a final push from his old master to finally inform him that his redemption lies within Rey and what knowledge and inspiration he can pass on to her, that his mistake can be passed on as lessons for future generations to learn from. And I love the epilogue of how Luke's dying act has inspired the galaxy. The rise of Skywalker, meanwhile, is straight pandering. Luke catches the lightsaber, says he was wrong, lifts the X-Wing out of the water. I'll talk about reactionary filmmaking later and why I hate it, but this is one of the prime examples. People says that this is how Luke should have been in The Last Jedi, but I don't get the appeal of seeing him return to do the exact same thing. It's the Indiana Jones problem. If you just get the character doing the same thing, but as an older, grumpier guy, it doesn't work. If they had Luke whip out a lightsaber and fully face off against Kylo or Snoke, it would border on ridiculous camp, shooting lightning from his face and doing triple laser backflips. It's the same shit that ruined Palpy and Yoda in the prequels. Such characters at this point shouldn't be doing that. They should be showing us how powerful they are in ways other than just swinging lightsabers at each other. The Rise of Skywalker bitches out on doing the actual interesting story in Duel of the Fates of Luke haunting Kylo, just to have him give Rey a pep talk and Leia's lightsaber, completely wasting the things you could do with Luke and helping him further Kylo's madness. And speaking of Leia, Leia is actually one of the things I like about The Rise of Skywalker. I think the way she was integrated was kind of brilliant and the most emotional element of the film. The scene where she makes a sacrifice to make a final outreach to Ben is a great way to go. I love the way they used Leia in the new trilogy mostly, showing her strong authoritative way and expanding on her character. Unfortunately, any comparison between the films is extremely unfair due to her passing, so I'll move on to the next topic. Palpatine. <sighs> well, we had to get here eventually. This is by far the worst element of the film. Of course, it must be stated that Ian McDiarmid is delightful as this character, and I was completely up for seeing him return, but not like this. Bringing back Palpatine lacks basic storytelling logic. You know the whole, there's a gun in the scene, you have to set that up? Well, here, that is the error. Having zero reference to Palpatine is a problem, but it's only part of it. The excuse of saying that he was the puppet master of basically everything makes you question things the wrong way. Instead of wondering what's going to happen, you end up wondering, will any of this matter? If Palps has come back, what's to stop him from coming back again? Does this big battle mean anything? It's so dumb bringing him back. Using him as a scapegoat for all the perfectly reasonable questions Fan had. Who is Snoke? 
Where did the First Order come How from? How were they funded? Why do they have the same weapons? Why did no one realize they were stealing babies? Is Jabba transphobic? How did Kylo meet Snoke? Do you reckon Jar Jar is a How were the dick? Knights of Ren formed? How do these things fuck? Palpatine did it! One of the things I hate in storytelling is scapegoat plot elements. Basically something introduced into the story which can quickly be used to explain a large chunk of all events in multiple films. It's like the Spectre reveal in Spectre, where you find out that all of Bond's pain has been caused by one guy. It's dumb and lazy. Having him be Rey's grandfather is stupid. It robs Rey of what made her interesting as a character and relatable to the audience. Her being a normal person was the worst thing that could have happened to her as a person. Finding out that she wasn't from a special bloodline. Instead we get the old been there done that of having our protagonist be related to the villain, which instead of being done in a tragic emotional way, is done in a stupid corny way. They dodged the whole how the hell did the First Order rise to power by just saying he did it, and as soon as this line popped up, I have been every voice you have ever heard inside your head. It was honestly cause for panic, but Palpy isn't the only returning character who got mishandled. Wookiees stand out in the crowd. Lando shows up in this film. Why? Because we need to have something in the film for nostalgia. Him and the Falcon, Palpatine, Star Destroyers, X-Wings, TIE Fighters, Lightsabers, Stormtroopers, The Rebellion, The Tantive, The Death Star, Tatooine, The Homestead, Jawas, Cloud City, Ewok, Red Five, all the Jedi. But here, no bit of fan service is done for furthering the story, except for maybe the Death Star? But even there, it's played heavily for nostalgia. Just look at this scene. Lando kind of encompasses all of these things. With Luke, Leia, and Han, there has been some major developments with their character over the last 30 years. They're not just being wheeled out for nostalgia. Han and Leia had a son who went rogue and they separated, and Luke started training a new generation of Jedi until it all went tits up. But with Lando, nothing. He's just here to pop up as some weird exposition guy. But then he flies a falcon around for five minutes and then meets his daughter. But it doesn't come off that way because Billy D. Williams is the coolest human on the planet and when he says something like this, it's always going to come off as hitting on her because it's Lando. There's a small hint that he has changed over the years, but it's never expanded on and he's just largely played as a sub because we don't have any of the old characters. And two of the main ones already can't speak. There is not enough to his character here to explore, so why have him? Because remember Lando? I really hate bringing this one up because John Williams is the greatest composer in cinema and who the fuck am I to critique him? But compared to the last two films, his score is kind of weak. In The Force Awakens, we got Rey's theme, Poe's theme, Kylo's themes, and the Resistance March. And in The Last Jedi, we got Rose's theme, Luke's Island theme, the Canto Bite music, Luke marching out on Crate, and the build up to the lightsaber attack. Here we get the Rise of Skywalker theme, which is kind of weird and doesn't really fit Star Wars. It ain't exciting and is more of a fit to ET or Close Encounters. Like here, when Rey and Ben are taking on the various Cadden Fodder, the music isn't exciting. The music in the throne room in The Last Jedi was fantastic and honestly, I might have actually liked the music for Rogue One more than this movie. I'm going to try and keep this short because if I go on for too long about action, I'll sound like one of those guys going, Revenge of the Sith has the bestless lightsaber fight because they do flips and tricks into lava. No. No. But for most of the sequel trilogy, the action all had a purpose, and if it didn't, at least it was fun and had good character interactions. First Falcon Chase is like the start of Star Trek Into Darkness, where the characters are just spewing one-liners in a scene that just feels so generic. The Last Jedi had the fun, exciting, and intense opening scene of Poe and the Star Destroyer. Kylo in his TIE Fighter, Snoke's Star Destroyer and the escape to Crate and the ensuing battle. In all of these scenes, they either had fun or interesting character moments. Poe and BB-8 quipping, the connection between Kylo and Leia when he's blowing up the ships, Rey and Kylo balancing the force during the fight, the oh shit moment where Holdo realizes what is happening, Finn's redemption and the moment of humanity from Phasma, although they should have gone with the much better deleted scene, and the little moments during the battle of Luke and Kylo's final fight. In The Rise of Skywalker, the only memorable action scene is the fantastic lightsaber fight on the Death Star. I love how it's slower using the force in new ways. You see how Rey gets exhausted and is just hopelessly swinging her saber as Kylo wears her down. 
It's great internalizing here, and unfortunately that all gets lost in the final battle where it turns into a Marvel movie with weird moments of comedy as we see Adam Driver use bungee cords to jump around and watch as these stormtroopers get dragged around. It turns into complete schlock in the final battle, Palpatine shooting lightning in the air, the Rebellion vs the Zombie Star Destroyers, Palpatine disposing of Ben in the most hilarious fashion, Ray repelling the lightning into Palpy's face. It was interesting to get the opinion of my dad who was around for the original trilogy, and he said how one of the most most incredible moments was seeing two sons, and now this franchise has devolved into a girl with two glow sticks repelling lightning back into her zombie grandfather's face. Like, how the fuck did we get here? The Battle of Crate had so many personal moments. I compare it to the finales of Endgame and Infinity War. Infinity War had so many great personal character moments. Meanwhile in Endgame it's just a big grey clusterfuck. Like there are some nice quips but nothing serious or emotional. And the one moment that is meant to be like that points out everything wrong with the film. You took everything from me. I don't even know who you are. The final battle lacks any emotional resonance because the film hasn't focused enough on the emotional element of the film. Just the weird join the dot story. There's no emotional connection between Ray and Palpatine. Ben doesn't get to say anything and that kiss. How does a series with one of the best kisses in cinematic history also have three of the worst? Every action film just feels like a fast-moving, quip-filled distraction from how messy and disjointed the plot is. My last point is something that is plaguing the film industry, and that is trying to tamper with storylines or just the entire film to pander. In some cases this is fine, but sometimes when you do this it sacrifices consistency and continuity with the characters. Rey was a nobody, then you bitched loudly enough about it and now she's a Palpatine. You want Luke to be a wise leader, well here he is. You want Lando, here he is. It's straight pandering to the fans without any real substance. It's like Vader and Tarkin in Rogue One. This film is co-written by Chris Terrio, who you may know wrote Batman v Superman and Justice League, and that makes sense. Justice League was a very reactionary film. Superman acted weird, Batman made quips, The Flash was Peter Parker, and the film was tampered to resemble a Marvel movie, and it failed horribly. At least BVS felt like someone's vision. As bad as that was, it felt like its own thing, not controlled by anyone else. Justice League feels like a movie made by the Us clones of Marvel producers. The Rise of Skywalker feels like a dumb movie written by angry Star Wars fans who don't actually know anything about narrative structure, and just want to pump in as much references and dumb action as possible. I want to see the characters in a new light, give them a new perspective. Don't just give me what I've seen before. Take Creed. In Creed he goes to find Rocky and he's hesitant because of the guilt he feels for his dad and how boxing has kind of ruined his relationship with his son. The most generic version of this would have just been Creed shows up and Rocky would instantly start training him. But the film does more. It gives Rocky his own struggles and self-doubts and makes him a great character for the first time since the first film. This is what The Last Jedi did for Luke, making him a real person and it takes a new direction rather than just him returning to action. The Rise of Skywalker took the dumbest fan theories and made them reality. Who is Snoke Palpatine? Who is Rey related to Palpatine? Kylo gets the Darth Vader treatment of turning good and then dying, but there's nothing compelling about any of it. It compromises the series' vision. I've read the Duel of the Fate script and well, it's, it's not great and I'd say it's only a little better than this, but at least there's clear continuity between the films. But ultimately, Disney. You have a great chance for this next series to take a leap of faith into a new area of the Star Wars universe. The Mandalorian has given us a taste of that, but now the ball is in your court. Give us a story that excites us, challenges us, inspires us, and makes us hopeful for the future of the franchise. I was really on board for those first two films, but sitting in that cinema, it was like you were telling me, okay, we know you didn't like what we did with The Last Jedi, but don't worry, we're going to pump this full of action and fan service and make sure we don't throw any curveballs. It'll be a safe movie. And I was just sitting there like, I like The Last Jedi. Oh. So that's the video. What did you guys think? Am I crazy for liking The Last Jedi or do I actually have a point? So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, like and share the video. Your support would be so great for a small channel. Please check out these other videos I've done and until next time, bye!